So now we're going to talk about finding a z-score, and the only way we can do that is if we start by knowing an area or a probability. Remember, area and probability are basically the same thing. So if we know the area or probability, um, we'll need to know if it's above or below the mean, which direction, but based on that, we can find the closest z-score that this area or probability came from. What we'll do is essentially we're going to use the table backwards because what we will do is start with the area inside the table and we're going to be reading out to the left and the top so that we can get that z-score that we were asked to find. Um, now, most cases we're not actually going to be able to find the exact number in the middle of the table that we're asked and if that happens, then we just find the number inside the table that's closest to the number we're looking for. You'll notice in the table below, you know, there's gaps between the numbers that 0 0.8790, the next digit would not be 8810. So we'll have to go with whatever's closest. There are a couple times when the number we're looking for is dead in the center of two values, it's equidistant. And when that happens, since one value is not closer, We'll just use the average of the two z-scores that our number would fall between. And so here's a short little example that's pretty easy. Um, I'm asked to find the z-score with the area 0.9015. So I'm going to look for it and I'm like too small, too big, and I kind of just keep bouncing around the table and then all of a sudden I find it. Generally you won't find your exact number, but to make this first example easy, I did. So that means now I'm going to read to the left, I'm going to read to the top, and I'm going to combine those two numbers to get my z-score. So if I knew that the area to the left of something was 0.9015, then it must have been 1.29 standard deviations above average. And so, you know, here's my 1.29 standard deviations above the mean, above average, and the area to the left is that shaded in part. So just kind of tie it all together. Okay, so now I want to find a specific z-score, so that means I want to find a number on the edge, and this time I was given one with area 0 0.9170 to the left. And if it's not to the left, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I scour through the middle of the table and I'm looking and a lot of times I'm like too small, too big, too small, too big, and I'm bouncing all around the table and then I decide, okay, 0 0.9170 would have been right here if it was in the table. That means the number I need is not an exact value in the table. Um, so I need to figure out which two numbers it's in between. So it was in between the 9162 and the 9177. In the case that our number is not in the table, remember we go with the closer number. So when I look at the first number, the 9162, that was too small for what I wanted, but that doesn't tell me whether it's closer or further. I need to find how far away it is. And it's 0 .008 units away. Right? I took the number I wanted, subtracted the number that I'm comparing, and found the distance, so 0 0.0008. Same thing with the other number. This one happened to be too big. It's not bigger than the number I'm looking for, but that's not what's important. It's distance is important. 0 0.0007 away. Again, I just subtracted the number I was working with from the number I wanted to figure out the total distance. So looking at the two values in red, I designed that 0 0.007 is closer than 0008, right? If you're seven feet away from something, you're closer than being eight feet away. So that tells me that the number I wanted to use was the 0.9177, and that's going to give me the z-score I want. 1.39.